setting sun But I'll never run I'm a dead man walking I'm a dead man walking I will stay and fight As long as I'm alive I'm a dead man walking I'm a dead man walking Good evening everybody and welcome to the Sim Experience South Africa Classic Porsche Cups proudly sponsored by Alwyn Glass. I'll be your commentator tonight, Dennis Mitchell. And for this series we're only going to have five rounds. This will be the first round at Classic Kailami, 1976 layout, which is a, a very fast classic track. A lot of history behind it. And this track the 1976 version of this track was the 10th anniversary of the four South African Formula 1 race which had the likes of James Hunt, Joachim Mas, John Watson, Emerson Fittipaldi, Clay Ragazzoni, Mario Andretti, Jackie X, our own Jody Schechter and even his brother Ian Schechter taking part in the race was that year won by Niki Lauda. Our schedule for the series will be tonight will be round one on the 31st of October, round two which will be Aldous Grabanti on the 7th of November, round three which will be East London on the 14th of November, round four which will be Swatkoops on the 21st of November and the final round will be the current version of Pile Army on the 28th of November. Alright let's go and have a look at what the drivers are up to. A little bit of info on our new system, we've deci uh, decided to use R-Factor 2 as our sim of choice for our leagues. So this is our first official league event running on R-Factor 2. It's quite a change for some of the drivers, but it looks like most of the drivers are, are thriving in it. The competition is very close. These cars are fantastic to drive. Our cameraman is automated, so I won't be doing any controls on the cameras. Everything is completely automated on that aspect. I will just be controlling whatever the overlays are and giving my feedback to what's happening. But otherwise, looks like we're going to have an exciting series. And it's all South African tracks, so it's a pure South African championship with a very famous classic South African supercar. Well, produced in Germany, but very popular in South Africa. <laughs> Everyone on the YouTube, thanks guys for watching. I see Stephen <laughs> chatting and driving, his wife obviously supporting the Yvonne. Hello Yvonne. Monet as well, how's it? Monet and everyone else watching. Um, if there's any issues with the audio, please feel free to let me know in the chat. But otherwise, let's have a look at the time. So, 
currently early stages in qualifying, but we've got Sean Olivier in pole position on a 26.058. Sean Weber in second, 0.7. Well, now he's just been beaten by Timo Smit, who's 0.464 off. Then Sean Weber, 0.785 off. Now Dennis Kutzer's popped up into second, 0.061 off. Times are tumbling fast. Stephen Castellan is currently 1.8 off. Sean Johnson 2.5 off, Donny Standard 2.6 off, Bjorn Buchner also 2.6 off, I had to just double check that, it was rather close. Ross Human 2.8 off, Harvey Hose 3.9 off. Interesting story about Harvey Hose is he actually raced this track many years ago in Formula V. He's a multiple South African Formula V champion and was lucky enough to race various iterations of this track. We've got Marius van Weyck, 4.1 off. Ilka Fjernicher, 5 seconds off. Uh, Waldo Swigger is currently 13 seconds off, but I'm sure that will change soon. Uh, Rian van der Westhuizen hasn't set a time. Willem Steen hasn't set a time. Mune Deploy hasn't set a time. Andre Hildebrandt hasn't set a time. And Dylan Fasaki has not yet set a time. After the races I will be doing interviews for the top three if they're available. If not, then three of the available drivers. So hopefully everything's smooth and guys are still around and we can have some nice interviews and catch up with them and hear their takes on the race and on the qualifying. I'm, I'm corrected, Yvonne is Steven's mom, not Steven's wife. <laughs> Well, hello, Yvonne. <laughs> now, these cars are fantastic to drive, but they're quite a handful. But they're very progressive, so when you get them sideways you can hold them, but you've got to be very delicate with the throttle and the steering. But fantastic cars to drive. If anyone doesn't have R-Fact and would like to take part, um, R-Fact is currently on special on Steam. With a massive amount of 38 Rand. You heard me correctly, 38 Rand. So for 38 Rand you could buy the game, download all these free add-ons that we are using, and come join us. Not too sure how many drivers will be joining us as Sean Weber loses it big time there. Nice, nice slide. Just couldn't hold it. Not too sure how many drivers will be joining us throughout the season. There are several more likely to join. The server is capable of handling 45 drivers at a time. So we could potentially have some pretty large fields. This track it's not so bad, it's pretty large and open. But some of the tracks like Aldous Rabanti and Swartkorps are much smaller sort of tighter tracks that would be very challenging with higher number fields so fingers crossed everything goes smooth throughout the season the numbers are high and the racing is nice and close seeing Bjorn on camera at the moment Bjorn is a driver that's been around a long time fantastic driver Good to see him back again. And there we see Monet going a bit too wide in that drift. Fantastic livery on his car. An old retro van style livery for a retro car. That's a fantastic idea. Even has the vans checkered 
logo on the top of the car as well. It looks really great. With regards to the sim, it's very new, so some of the guys don't yet understand how all the skins and things work. We ourselves are still figuring it all out. So as the season progresses, we are likely to evolve in that regard, and everyone's likely to have their own skin, so expect a few drivers to have duplicate skins. So we'll just have to be informed as to who is who. A nice slow-mo of a car getting out of shape, heading for the barrier. All of these replays that you're seeing as well is also completely automated. So unlike a set of Corsa, a replay in a set of Corsa needs to be captured by the person doing everything. It has to be seen on screen. R Factor captures everything and with this software it's able to determine what is required to be on screen. That was a nice slide there by Sean. Very different to what we've been using but um, really fantastic, really good physics. Everything about this sim is just fantastic. So he goes his bonnet. I gather that was the cause for the yellow flag. Seeing Dylan having a, a go there. He's just got the, the sim so he's very new to it so still finding his feet. I imagine once he does he will be very very quick. He's our current champion from our MX-5 Cup Series that we just completed. As we can see our times there, still Sean Olufe on top, 126.0, Tima Smith second, 0.4 off. I think that means someone has disconnected. Third is Mornay Deploy, 0.5 off, Sean Weber is fourth, Stephen Castellan is now fifth, Dylan Fasaki is sixth, Sean Johnson seventh. Someone else is now disconnected. Um, Jorn Buchner is 7th, Arnie Stander 8th, Brian van der Veste is in 9th, Ross Human is 10th, Andre Hildebrandt 11th, R.S. van Rijk is 12th, Willem Steen is 13th, Waldo Swiggers is 14th, Harvika is 15th and Hilke Ferenica is 16th.
So out of the two drivers that have left us, it was Dennis Knutzer and Timo Smit. Hopefully they rejoin soon as they are our top runners at the moment. Sean Olivier has done a blistering 125.6 there now. That is fantastic. The track will slowly be gripping up as well. So the more laps they do, the better the grip gets, the faster they're going to get. But that is a fantastic lap. Fantastic looking skin as well. The owner of our sponsor. Wilke Furenica is the owner of Alvin Glass, so if you ever need any automotive glass, he's the guy to call. Whether it's trucks, buckies, cars, canopies, they can provide anything you need. Lap times are really getting quick at the moment. Monet is up to second ahead of Timo now. Absolutely fantastic watching them get sideways around the corners. Monet is on for a good lap. Fastest first sector now. The way you broadslide these cars and just hold it with kindness and a bit of throttle. Absolutely fantastic feeling. Fastest middle sector. This is going to be a good lap. Right, what's it going to be? Twenty-five, three, maybe. Twenty-five, four, and he took provisional pole position with that time. That's a fantastic time. Qualifying almost over. How many changes are we going to see? Right, it's time has officially ended. So how many of them can get their laps in? My army is of course located very high above sea level, so most of our other tracks are coastal tracks, so the car should have a bit more power there as well, so that will make it even trickier, tighter corners, more power. Timo is heading for a good, good lap here, let's see where he ends up. Does he improve? He does indeed. Same position, but now 0.4 off where he was a second off. So that was a good improvement by him. Another fantastic driver. Expect him to come good in the race as well. He'll definitely be fighting for the podium. Right, that is that. This is the, the end of qualifying.
I am going to jump to a quick ad break. We will be back shortly. And we're back live. Drivers are now on the outlap. So they will be preparing themselves. I'm your commentator, Dennis Mitchell. I'll be with you for the duration of this 30 minute race. Drivers will now sit about preparing their cars, warming their tires. While they're doing that, let's have a look at the starting order. So in pole position we have Mornay Duploy, followed by Sean Olifier, Timo Smith and Sean Weber. In fifth place we have Stephen Castellan, Dylan Fasaki, Sean Johnson and Waldo Swiggers. In ninth place Bjorn Buchner, Ross Human, Andre Hildebrandt and Donnie Stander in twelfth. Thirteenth place we have Rian van der Westezen, Marius van Weyck, Willem Steen and Harvey Hoes in sixteenth. Bringing up the rear we have Hilke Vereniger. Here is our schedule for the year, for the year, for the series. <laughs> so we're currently round one. Round 2 on the 7th of November, Round 3 on the 14th of November, Round 4 on the 21st of November and Round 5 on the 28th of November. Alright, so let's get our timing up. Let's see what everyone is doing. I'll be coming up to the start, it's a rolling start. So the safety car will pull in, Mornay will set the pace as soon as it pulls in and as soon as it goes green everyone is flat out.
we will most likely hear the R Factor man screaming go 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 as soon as it is time to go. Alright, getting closer to the start. Heart rates must be pumping now. Green flag, green flag, go go go! And there we go, as he says, go go go! Three wide, almost four wide, no, three wide. It's a fantastic start there by Timo. Will everyone get through turn one safely? Tires are cold, it takes about two laps for the tires to warm up. You've got to be patient on the first few laps. It looks good so far, looks like everyone's made it. On board with Mornay here, lost quite a lot of places at the start. Definitely taking it as cautious as can be. Oh, lots of tire smoke there. No driver aids with these cars, no traction control, no ABS. It's all done with your feet. Oh, going wide there. That's tight. Very close there, nice sliding there. I think Mornay is just waiting to pounce. Getting a bit of a slide on there, sometimes a slightly wider line there, but earlier, you can get on the throttle a bit earlier down the straight, gain you an extra K or two. But he was a bit too wide, a bit too late there, lost a bit of drive. But he's nicely sitting in the slipstream there. He's got Sean smack bang in his sights. Will he go for the past? Don't think he's close enough. Waldo has also made up a place up to 7th. Oh, Sean getting really out of shape there. Hanging, hanging onto it really well there. the race length being 30 minutes the drivers need to decide how they wish to drive if they push too hard they might require a pit stop but if they drive a bit more conservatively they can manage it and survive to the end without having to do a pit stop so it's in the driver's hands how will they drive what is their strategy Steven ran slightly wide, they lost a lot, this is left Timo out in front, oh Monet's gone wide into the barrier, Sean coming up his inside, oh, bit of contact there, no harm no foul, I'm sure Monet's heart was in his throat there, probably thought it was all over, there's damage on the cars as well so you got to be careful otherwise you end up going into the pits, pit stop is not exactly fast in these cars either. This is not Formula 1 where they do pit stops in sub 2 seconds here. It takes almost a minute to do, it, to do a pit stop. Sean Johnson now up to 4th, slowly progressing and hanging onto the back of Sean Olafia. Sean is definitely a Sunday man. He doesn't seem to worry about the times and practicing and qualifying, but come the race his consistency is always key. I'll always be there. So at the front we still have Timo Smith, Sean Johnson's hanging onto the back of the fight for second. I'm surprised Stephen Castellan hasn't pulled away a bit more. He's also an extremely fast driver. I'm sure once he gets in his rhythm he'll start pulling away a bit more. And Monet getting out of shape there. I think maybe trying a little bit too hard. He knows he's got the pace just needs to be patient and play the long game, I think. Looks like his drive wasn't that great out of the final corner but he's nicely sat in the slipstream pulling out 
Will he make it up the inside? Is he going to go? No, he's pulling back in. Deciding to hang on and wait his wait his turn. I need to be cautious. Let's see how their times compared on the last lap. One point six quicker than Sean, so he's got the pace to pass him. But catching is one thing, as the great Murray Walker said, passing is another. And as I say that, up the inside he goes, getting it sideways. Managing to hang on to it, great pass there. Swiggers, first time we're seeing him in the race. Another great driver. Expecting his paces to improve as he gets familiar with everything. A fantastic skin in front of him. I believe that's Harvey Hose's skin. His old colours that he raced when he raced his Formula V's around this track. Oh, got a nice drive up the inside of Harvey there. Another battle going on here. He's got the pass. Does he have it? I think he does. Uh, oh, it's really hanging in there. Sean's fighting him for it. <laughs> it's a great battle between them. Nice and clean. their lap times comparing. Oh, 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 there it goes. Not, not a nice place to be facing the wrong way. Oh dear. Managed to save it from the wall at least, so that's good. They're already lapping Milka now. First driver to be lapped. I presume he's been off a few times. Which surprisingly the replays haven't caught. Fantastic watching these cars move around, seeing the tyre flex and suspension giving in. And like that with the back end just hanging in there. On the edge of adhesion, it's just fantastic how the guys can hang on to it. Right, is Rian going for the move here? He is. Is he going to stick, stick it down there? He is. Fantastic. Oh, and then he loses it. Oh no, he hung on to it. Ran wide, and oh, now he's lost it. That was almost. That was real bad fortune for Rian. They made the pass, got a little bit sideways, counted it a bit too much, had to fight the tank slapper and just sadly lost it. Right, on board with Rian now. Let's see if he can make back any of those positions he's lost. Brian's one of the drivers that's definitely improved a lot with R-Factor. It's definitely suited him and he's just gelled with it. Also from a driver's perspective, driving in VR, VR from R-Factor's perspective looks really good. And Rian is one of our VR drivers as am I and R Factor in VR just looks really good, the scaling is really good, the colours so that's definitely benefited him but I think he really gels with the physics maybe not so much with this particular car struggles a bit with this car but with the other cars that we've driven, the GT cars in endurance racing and that definitely been a lot more competitive than what he was in, in a set of Corsa Oh, 
Oh, someone really sideways in front of Bjorn. I think that's Dylan in front of him. Really, really, yeah. Really sideways. Bjorn managing to get the position thanks to Dylan's sideways antics. Sometimes it's fun to be sideways, but it's certainly not the fastest way around the track. And we have 20 minutes left in the race. So a th third of the way done. One driver's already had a DNF, so I'm not sure where that was from. Perhaps going off track, getting a penalty and not doing a penalty. And a new fastest lap from Warner Deployer, 126.043. Not quite in qualifying speeds, but definitely getting there. Renee's currently 7 seconds back or adrift from Timo, sitting behind Stephen Castellan at the moment and then Sean Olivier. Nice battle there for second. As we're on board now with Stephen Castellan. But Sean firmly in his sights. Oh, and he loses it. Just gearing down a bit too fast, blocking up the rear. And these cars with the engine at the back, once it goes, very hard to catch it. That's a shame for Steven, losing two places there. Let's see if he can make it up though. Dylan fighting his way back. Dylan is fresh to our factor, so having come just from Aseto, he's got a lot to learn. It's a very different feeling, so I'm doing really well, considering that he's just jumped in probably about 15 minutes before official practice started. Getting it sideways, hanging on to it. Great to see. Ross had a much nicer line than Dylan. They might be able to attack. These cars is definitely slower in, faster out going too fast you just scrub off all your speed with these and then get sideways and you fighting a slide you lose a lot of momentum and as I was saying earlier on Sean Johnson is a Sunday man he's up to fourth place great position at the moment just shy of the of the podium oh a nice slide behind you Ross getting it nice and sideways in there, just holding it, avoiding contact with Dylan. And of course we've got uh, Bjorn right in front of them, so this is a really great battle. Driving these cars when you're fighting them sideways like that, in close quarters to another car is really exhilarating. Yeah, and playing with the throttle, just feeding it. Sounded like he was locking the brakes slightly. Oh, there he goes. Managing to do a 360. Hopefully the car's not too damaged and he didn't lose too much. We're nearing the middle of the race. Perhaps it's time we have a look at the current standings. going to show. No, it's not. Still also trying to learn all the systems here a little bit. I think I had clicked on the wrong, wrong box there. What I meant to do was look at our current standings by clicking on this. So currently we have Timo Smith from Sean Olafia, from Mona Deploy, from Sean Johnson, from Stephen Castlin, from Danny Stunder, Waldo Swiggers, Sean Weber, Morris van Weyck, Jorn Buchner, Ross Human, Dylan Versaki, Harvey Koos, Brian van der Vestes, and Hilke Vrenneke, and Willem Steen, who is our only casualty of the race so far.
Alright, let's have a look at the extended battle of these three guys. It's pretty close. Is he gonna go for it? Oh, someone sliding sideways. I think Donnie might have done a... Oh, he managed to actually... Oh, a little bit of contact there. Managed to hang on to it at least. We've passed the halfway mark in the race, so let's see how the attrition goes as the race progresses with the tire wear going, the fuel coming down. Perhaps it's time to go and look at uh, the YouTube. Let's see, we've got Gary Johnson shouting for his brother, Sean Johnson. Hello, Gary. Hope you're well. Hope you're enjoying the stream. Hope you're not too. Shocked by me being the, the commentator. <laughs> Alright, so back to the racing. I see Dennis Kutzer saying in the chat on Discord that he couldn't race his powers gone out. So unfortunately we lost him due to an ESCOM issue. And Timo Smith was also asking if I'm racing tonight, and um, the answer is no. I'm not, because I'm here. As much as I would love to be driving, I am going to be doing the broadcast for a bit, so... Hopefully this gets smoother and smoother, learning a lot, learning the software, learning streaming side of things. Some fantastic battles going on here. Barney Stunder's having a great race with the flames coming out the back of the car on the downshift there. These cars sound fantastic. Let's see how Bjorn's line differs to Donnie's line. Slightly wider. Got a bit sideways. So is this now Stephen on the back of Sean Johnson? Is Sean going to lose his fourth place? Oh, Stephen getting a bit sideways on the curb there. We have a yellow flag in sector 2. I guess someone has gone off. Not sure if we're going to see it in the replay perhaps. I was thinking possibly it would be Bjorn because we were watching him and sometimes there's a replay of an incident but it doesn't say it's a replay. But he didn't go off so I presume not. Alright, so let's just do a, at the moment, um, I was going to just check the standings again, since we're now almost on the 10 minute mark, see so we've got yet another yellow flag, so another one's gone off, and Steven is ever closer, oh, it's Dylan, Dylan's got a DNF. That's sad to see. He was doing a great job up until that point. But alright, then let's have a look at our mid-race results. It's on the wrong page. Alright, so, page one. We have Timo Smith still in the lead. Sean Olafier in second. Monet Deploy in third. Sean Johnson, a solid fourth at the moment. 
being chased hard by Stephen Castellan. Waldo Swiggers is now up to six thanks to the de demise of Dylan Versace. Sean Weber up to seventh. Donny Stander is eighth. Marius van Weg is ninth. Ross Human is tenth. And in eleventh place we have Bjorn Buchner. Twelfth, Harvey Hoes. Thirteenth, Rian van der Westhuizen. Fourteenth would have been Dylan Fasaki, but that will, I'm sure, be inherited by Hilke Vereniger. And then Dylan Fasaki will most likely get 15th and Willem Steen will get 16th. So we're into the final third of the race. Let's see how it goes towards the end. The battles, I'm sure, are going to intensify now. Sean got a good drive. Oh, just getting that wrong there. Uh, Waldo's holding him off nicely. Sean looking up the inside, but I think Waldo's got it covered. He's got got the momentum on the outside line. Sean looks like he's got a little bit sideways there as well. Nice sideways action there. Once again, Stephen on the bumper of Sean here, Sean Johnson. And Sean holding his ground. Sean's consistency come race days is just remarkable. We have a new fastest lap by Timo Smith, a 125.927. So Timo's definitely got it going. At the moment he's uh, likely to take it, barring a mistake. Just over eight minutes to go, just under eight minutes to go. So let's have a look at uh, these two drivers' times because they are extremely close. What was the difference in the previous lap? 0 0.0156, that is pretty close. Very defensive driving by Sean there, taking the wider line. Also helped him get a bit more drive. But Steven's looking. But he's also drifting. Nicely held. Wow, that was a fantastic drift. <laughs> I'm sure his heart was in his mouth at that point. Fantastic how he held it. Lost a little bit of time, but I'm sure he will catch again. So with six and a half minutes to go, we have 14 drivers of our 16 drivers remaining. I'm sure at some stage we had 18, but for some reason it's only showing 16 now. Um, I think one was Dennis Knutzer and he probably left before the race started, that's why it's not showing. And I'm not sure who the 18th member was. Steven's really chucking it sideways at the moment. He must be having a blast just throwing it sideways and hanging it out like that. These cars are an absolute blast when you're throwing them around like that. Fortunately, it does slow everything down a lot, but and wear your tires a lot. But it's sure the most fun way to drive these cars. We haven't seen much of Timo in this race, but he's out front just doing his own thing, pulling away, setting fastest times. Whilst behind him, all sorts of action. That was well held by Waldo. For a moment it looked like he was going to hit the barrier, but managed to hang on to it. Here we have Morris van Weyck. We haven't seen Morris at all, I think, this race. Fantastic color scheme on his car. 
Absolutely fantastic colors that definitely stands out. Morris is also in a solid 8th position. Is he going to go for it? No. No. Just lost it there. Trying to take the tighter line. Just lost a little bit of, lost a little bit of rear traction there. And unfortunately has lost quite a lot of ground. Looked like he had a bit of speed there. But unfortunately, Sean was just a little bit faster. Managed to hang on to it out of the corner. Got a bit more drive. Stephen on the back of Sean once again. Sean Johnson. But once again, Stephen getting it sideways, all out of shape. I'm very surprised at how smooth Sean Johnson is. I think that's why he's so good in the races. Just keeps it nice and neat, doesn't do anything wild and silly. And just always gets solid results as a result of it. While Stephen in the back is having all the fun, throwing it all over the show, but definitely not going to do his tyres any good. See Waldo again. Waldo seems to be having a lot of fun coming through the field, then loses a few places, then comes through the field again. Also, another driver, good pace on him. Let's see what his uh, what his pace is like. His fastest lap is half a second faster than Ross in front of him. And on the last lap. doesn't look correct. I'm not sure why it's showing that. Alright, let's go back to our driver box. Is Sean going to go for the move now? Will he get it? I don't think. Unless it's a late lunge on the brakes, I don't think so. In these cars, if you go for that late lunge, you've got to worry about the rear end coming around on you. Especially if you go late on the brakes and gear down too fast. A little bit of compression locking up the rears with the weight of the motor at the back. Ooh, I think there was a slight bit of contact there between Waldo and Ross. I think under the brakes the car was really light and that was just enough to send him off. Waldo's really enjoying these cars and how they feel and how realistic they're feeling. He of course is a, one of our real world racers so he knows what a car should or shouldn't feel like. Especially these classic style cars. I think also when we start to get to the other tracks that Waldo's more familiar with. Oh it looks like Marius has spun there. In the final corner losing a few places. He was doing so well. I think when we get to the tracks that Waldo is more familiar with, he'll probably also be a bit more competitive. The likes of Aldous Grabante, East London, Swart Corps, I think he's going to do fantastic around those. A lot of the drivers' times are actually very close, but in the race they spread out because they're not as consistent or make the odd mistakes. As they get more familiar with the car, that'll probably be ironed out and it'll get a lot closer. Also, they're in new territory now, learning what the cars drive like on full race distance to see how the tires wear and everything with less than a minute to go now. Most of the drivers have never done a 30 minute stint with these cars. They would do maybe a 10, 15 minute stint, then come into the pits, change something. So most, most of them are in virgin territory at the moment. And I'm sure some of them, like the likes of Timo, will have his heart in his mouth at the moment. The slightest little bit of movement, being in the lead with such a commanding lead at the moment. The slightest little bit of movement and you suddenly become aware of everything.
Well, Lewis really trying hard there. Some fantastic racing through the field. We have Timo coming through the field, going through the back markers. Surprising number of guys that he's lapping. Hopefully no, none of them give him a hard time. I believe that <laughs> looked like a little bit of a tap as <laughs> someone went to the pits there. That was quite funny. And I believe that's it for Timo. It's the win under the belt. Congratulations to Timo and Sean coming up to... That was Sean. Was that Sean that went into the pits? Why are we seeing a slow motion of Sean? For some reason the director, camera director, decided we need to see a slow motion of Sean crossing the line there. The battle here for 10th place. Fantastic. I believe that's Waldo's Donnie. Oh, a little bit of contact. Donnie off. Oh, it was a big impact. That was a shame. Alright, so let's have a look at our final standings. So, in first place we have Timo Smith. In second place, Sean Olafia. Third place, Mone Deploy. In fourth place, in fourth place we have Sean Johnson. In fifth place, Stephen Castellan. In sixth place we have Waldo Swiggers. In seventh place we have Sean Weber. In eighth place we now have Bjorn Buchner. They are crossing the line. Ninth place will be Ross Human. Tenth, sorry, my place has changed there. Okay, tenth place will be Marius van Weg. I guess it's waiting for them to cross the line. And then we'll have Harvey Hoes, Rian van der Westezen, Hilke Vereniger, Dylan Versaghi and Willem Steen. Alright, I am going to jump to ads and go see if I can find some of the guys to join us for some interviews. Right, welcome back everybody. We are in the commentary booth now with uh, Timo Schmidt, our winner, Sean Olafia, our second placed man, and Mona Deploy, our third placed 
man. So let's start with Timo. Timo, you had a fantastic race. You didn't put it on pole, but in the race, you just looked untouchable. Once you got in the lead, you just pulled the gap. And your lap times, you said the fastest lap time is well over 125.9 something. So how did that go from your point of view? How were the tyres towards the end? It looked like most of the guys hadn't done a full race run on the tyres. So how was it from your point of view? Yeah, it was fantastic. Thanks, Dennis. Um, yeah, I had, a, I had an awesome time out there. Thanks for the uh, setup tip as well. The brake bias change definitely made a, a big difference. Um, yeah, having a look at the race, um, yeah, <laughs> we weren't exactly sure how the start procedure is going to work. So I sort of just get behind and then when I just heard green, I, I floored it. So <laughs> I was lucky there. <laughs> got past Mornay. Um, had a bit of luck there. Um, but yeah, at the end, uh, Mornay and, and Sean specifically, yeah, they, they kept me honest. I sort of kept an eye on the, you know, on the, on the lead that I had. So there was no time for relaxing. <laughs> I was on the edge. Um, <laughs> R Factor 2, what an amazing sim. Um, yeah, it's just so unbelievable. It's like you're always on the edge and it feels like you can go faster, but obviously, you know, you you, you can uh, end up in, in the kitty litter. So, yeah, fantastic fun. Thanks thanks for hosting. Um, and well done, Sean and Mornay. Great stuff, Dima. Um, Sean, what happened to you? In qualifying and practice, you were setting the pace. I mean, you were low 25s. I mean... You were going to just pull away, and in the race, you didn't. What happened? To be honest, I'm not sure. Um, I think the start um, knocked me off my pace. That that start, we didn't know how it was working. Um, but yeah, it was fun driving. Timo had a great race. Uh, Mornay was busy catching me. Um, but yeah, it was it was awesome, eh? Yeah, you showed some great pace. Hopefully, in the other rounds, you can get the wins that you deserved. You definitely looked like you needed that win. Yes, I tried everything, but yeah, um, I couldn't. I just couldn't catch Timo. It was just too fast. Yes, he was certainly on fire in the race. Then Mornay, yourself at the start, you stuck it on pole. You had the pace at the start. By turn one, I think you were fourth. You really looked like you took it really easy. Was that purely because of the start procedure or just because you were taking it easy? Yeah, you know, I think... I was under the impression that it was going to be a formation lap and then a standing start, but obviously, and I was there telling everyone, yeah, no, it's going to be a, a standing start, don't worry, <laughs> this and that. And then next thing, everyone, and then all I hear is green, 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 and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, by turn one, I was, I think, ended up fourth position, yeah, and then uh, I was busy batting with uh, Sean, uh, Sean Johnson and Sean Willowfield, but, uh, and then there was obviously the nice thing about off factor two's, uh, Physics and stuff is that you can you can bang bang doors with another car and not really end up in the wall, you know. Yes. So we had some good rubbing in uh, in the first uh, part of the race, but um, and I fell back and then I realised I was using more fuel than what I had calculated for. So with about I think it was about ten to fifteen minutes left of the race, uh, my crew chief was telling me I had to stop and put three liters of fuel <laughs> in to finish the race. So then, at that point, I had to try and start uh, fuel saving from then, and um, it actually worked out. I think I had about 0 0.3 liters of fuel left uh, when I crossed the line. So um, it was very <laughs> tight. So I was trying to watch the relative of Sean behind me because I knew he was catching me, so I had to hold the gap just just like far enough so that he couldn't catch me. And yeah, one more lap, and I think I was done for. Then I think he would have definitely taken third. Yeah, and a pit stop in these cars is not quick, so you would have lost a lot of time. And you had Sean Johnson yes. not too far back. Yeah, it was hectic. It was super fun, though, like um, trying to, you know, fuel safe and you know, trying to keep the position. And that no, was really good fun. And, um, yeah, again, well done to Timo. He, like, literally was just pulled out the gate and pulled out a big lead in the beginning. And, yeah, um, and also well done to Sean for second. And thank you for doing the stream tonight and the commentary. Hopefully that uh, all went uh, well. Hopefully it was smooth enough. Um, and thank, <laughs> thank you yourself for doing all of our fantastic video side of things that you do, the production side. It's really top-notch quality. Yeah, I know. It's a pleasure. Then to Timo. Um, well done again. Fantastic. You now lead the championship. We will have to put all the points and things up. We'll update that shortly. Um, would you like to give a shout-out to anyone? 
Uh, yeah, hopefully we see you on track <laughs> next time around. <laughs> yeah. You know, so we missed you. Uh, so any any willing uh, commentators out there that will like to uh, do, your, do your thing, yeah, go for it. Send your applications in. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, but also, yeah, thanks, thanks to everyone involved. Just a super awesome um, group to be part of. Yeah. So looking forward to the next one, and well done again to to all that actually finished. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks. And Sean, would you like to give a shout out to anyone? No, I just thank for everybody that's that, um, sought this out for us to be part in this race. Um, it's awesome. You guys are doing a great job. And Monet, any shout outs from your side? Uh, yeah, just uh, anyone who's uh, in the YouTube channel watching and um, who joined us for the first race, uh, thank you to you guys. Obviously, uh, with you guys, this helps a lot. Uh, helps the channel and stuff a lot as well. Helps grow our community. And yeah. Um, just uh, to everyone who took part in the race tonight as well. Um, again, it's uh, it was actually a really good turnout for our first uh, first race. So hopefully next week will be even bigger. Yeah, we have a few new guys likely to join next week. Also, as the word gets out that there is someone in South Africa hosting R Factor Two league events. Hopefully it will grow. So it's like, likely just to get bigger and better. But what a fantastic first event! And thank you guys so much for everything. I am going cool, to you, close everything up, so I will say goodbye and good night, and thank you for everyone for taking part in making this possible.